So sometimes uh, what we think of as a primary key may not actually be primary key. So for example, we might think that for a given day, which is, uh, let's say, uh, January 5, 2013, uh, so you've got that, and then you've got a flight number, right? So we, we may think that identifying a specific day and then having a flight number would uniquely identify a particular flight within our flight table, right? Let's check that. Let's say count year, month, day, flight, okay? So we would expect that this count would actually be just one for every single combination of year, month, day, flight. In other words, let's say you have a flight uh, UA1050, uh, UA1050, right? So you may think that if I say today's date and then put UA1050, there should be only one flight, right? Uh, that might make sense intuitively, but in fact, if you run it, you find that that is not the case. If you do filter n greater than 1, you find that there are uh, almost 30,000 such cases where the same flight number has uh, a couple of occurrences on the same day. Okay. Now, a uh, reason could be that, uh, you know, that for example, the flight at 9 a.m. is called UA1050. And the flight, let's say, at 3 p.m., uh, going to, let's say, the same destination or maybe even a different destination, has the same flight number, right? Most likely not a different destination, okay? So that is the reason why you have uh, the same flight number occurring uh, for the same day occurring more than once, right? So this is a case where we think it should be a primary key, but it's actually not a primary key. And, of course, you will find if you do this, you will find that uh, you actually get more. For example, I have actually run the query right here right and uh, if I if this is a query that I ran the same query that we're talking about and we find in fact that uh, you've got um, uh, you've got 29,768 rows where this actually occurs and of course you find that most of the time n is just two there are some threes as well okay it can't be more than two or three or four not not more than that Okay, so that's what we are checking here. So in these cases, what you might want to do uh, is, uh, let's say for a given day, you check the tail number, right? So once again, you may find that you've got more of them, right? So the same plane, same equipment, the same aircraft, physical aircraft, uh, obviously can make more than one flight on the same day. For example, it starts at 8 o'clock, goes to Washington, D.C., uh, comes back, uh, let's say, by 12 o'clock. And again, does another flight at 12.30 or 1 o'clock, right? So the same aircraft obviously can fly many times. But the fact that they would have the same flight number on the same day is a little surprising. But, you know, the data shows that who are we to argue with that, okay? So in these cases, sometimes you may want to add a surrogate primary key, okay? Uh, so you may want to do that, uh, in which case... Uh, just adding another field, right? That is, we are taking the row number and making it into a primary key. Okay, so I'm creating a new field called flight ID and simply saying, put the row number into that field, right? So obviously, the row number is going to be unique. And now you have an actual primary key for this table. Okay, so that's what we, call, we are calling as a surrogate primary key. Let's consider a scenario here. Let's say what we want to do is we want to take every flight and right now, the flight uh, information has only the airline code in it, right? Of course, many airline codes we recognize. For example, UA is United Airlines, US is US Airways. We recognize some of these, but there are some obscure airlines for which just the name will not, uh, you know, just the code will not tell us what the airline is. Let's say what we want to do is to take the flight's uh, data and add a column to it or add information about the airline name to it, right? So rather than just say UA, we want the flight information with the full airline name, United Airlines. Now, clearly to do this, we have to get information from the uh, flights table and we also have to add in the additional information from the airline table, okay? Let's see how we might do that. So you may say select from the flights table uh, just to make things wieldy. Uh, we are just uh, selecting some of the columns from the flight table. So we are saying, uh, get me only the columns from year to day, which would be year, month, day. Get me the hour, the origin, the destination, the tail number of the aircraft and the carrier, right? 
So obviously the flights table has many columns. We are selecting only a subset of the columns. We already know from the last class that select is what will help us to select only a subset of the columns. Okay. So flights 2 is our smaller table with, the, with fewer columns than flights. Okay. We are doing this just for convenience. Now what we, have, what we want to do is to add in the airline information. Right? And we can do that by saying flights 2, of course, this is just going to display the information. But now I'm going to do a, uh, again, dropping out the origin and destination. They're saying, again, just, just to illustrate what's going on. Uh, so we say, well, I don't want all of the columns. I don't want origin. You may say, well, in that case, you could have left out origin and destination here. Why are you leaving it out here? Just to illustrate how to use it. That's all. Right? So we're taking flights 2, which already has only a subset of columns. We are dropping the two columns, origin and destination as well. And then we are joining it to the airlines table. Okay. So we are saying, I've got the flights table, which has a field called carrier. And I've got the airlines table, which also has a field called carrier. So I'm saying join the two tables by the carrier field. Right. So what that is going to do is, it, let's say the first row of the flights table has uh, UA as the carrier. So when you say join it to the airlines table, what's going to happen is to that row, the information from the airlines table where the carrier happens to be UA, that information is going to get appended. So now United Airlines, the whole name is going to appear there. Okay, And we'll take a look at this more closely uh, shortly. Right? So that's what we mean by that. And of course, what do you mean by left join? We'll look at all of those shortly. Right? So this is what you do. So now when you do this, you're, you're saying join them by this column called carrier. This means that both of the tables have a column called carrier. And then it's going to join them by that. Okay. So this works well when the column on which you're performing the join has the same name in both of the tables. Right? Which will happen quite often. But again, as we saw earlier, there would be situations when that doesn't happen either. Right? So this works well when both the tables, not tables, tables have a column by this name. Okay, we, we do have other options when the names do not match. We'll look at them shortly. Okay, so this is what we call as a mutating join. Right? A mutating join in the sense that it's a join, okay, but the join adds new columns to the original table. So we're just calling it as a mutating join. Just to go with the consistent terminology, remember earlier when we said mutate, we use that to add new columns or add computed columns to an existing uh, table. So that's why we are calling this as a mutating join. Okay. So here we are again doing the same thing, right? Left join airlines by carrier. Okay. And this is what we did. Now this could have also been done uh, using uh, just plain R syntax. Instead of using by equals carrier, we could have done it like this, matching the names and so on. This is just a lot more verbose. So we won't even talk about this other approach, right? We'll just say join by particular field and everything gets done for us. This is far easier. Why would you use this at all? Okay, let us now delve a little deeper into joins and how they work. So we'll use a certain way of visualizing how joins work just to make things easier for you. And in order to do that, we'll consider two very simple tables rather than the big, huge ones we have, just to make sure we understand the concepts. Okay, so here we are creating one table, which has got two columns called key and value, key and val x. And the values are, you know, keys are one, two, three, the val x are x1, x2, x3. Very simple. And there's another table we are creating uh, with keys one, two, four, and the values are uh, val, val y is the name of the column and the values are y1, y2, and y3. Okay, so these are really the two tables that we have now created. Okay, uh, so um, th there's also a coloring scheme that we are using uh, just to, uh, you know, make sure that uh, the matching values are have the same color, right? So the idea is that this first column is going to be the key in each of these. And when we join these two tables, we're going to join them by this particular key. Okay, and of course, the name of the column is key. Okay, so this is called key here, it's called key here, right? So when we do the join, we don't even have to say join it by a particular column, it'll automatically join by the by matching column names. 
Okay, so we're, we're, I'm just doing everything in such a way that we can focus directly on the join itself. Okay, so we've got two tables, and like I said earlier, these are the two key columns that we're going to use, and the two columns are also called key. They have the same name in both the tables. Okay, so now, uh, when we use the word key, of course, here the name of the column is also key. Uh, so we use the word key in a specific sense, which is just to refer to the columns that are used to join two tables. Okay, and uh, it's informal terminology when it comes to R, because in our data frames and in our tables, there is no real internal concept of a key. You know, it's not part of the definition of a uh, data frame or a table. Okay, unlike relational databases where you know, every table has a well-defined key. Okay, so let's understand that and move on. So let's say we have two table, two tables, those same two tables that we just defined. Okay, and we just, uh, for convenience, we showed the keys now in the correct position so that when we are matching the keys, it's easier to visualize. Okay, so the way we are going to do it is to draw lines like this from every uh, row. We are going to draw lines going this way and for the other table going that way. And then, of course, where these lines intersect is where we will talk about the matches. Okay. So, for example, this one matches this one here. So, we'll put a big circle. It doesn't match anywhere else. So, we'll leave it out. Two matches, two here. So, it's it's like this. Okay. And, of course, three and four don't match. This, there won't be a circle. Okay. So, the matching, where the keys match, is an important consideration when it comes to this. Okay. So, now, when you join these two tables or these two tables, we see that we've got a match here and a match here, okay? So, uh, in the result, so when you just join these two tables, X and Y, in the result, we will only have those rows in which the keys match, okay? So, the key 1 matches the key 1 here, so there's a, uh, there's a dot there. And the key 2 matches the key 2 here, there's a dot here, okay? Now, 1 doesn't match any other key, it only matches this key, so there are no other dots here only the one dot here. Two also matches only this, so there's no other dot, only this one dot here. Three doesn't match anything, so no dots. Okay, so therefore, as a result of the join, you're going to have only those two particular rows in the output. Okay, now of course, you're going to have those two rows in the output, which columns? All columns, right? So we're going to have x1, 1, and then y1, right? We're not going to repeat the one here because after all, it's a match. So we're not good. So what you have is 1, x1, y1, right? So that is 1, x1, y1. So the point is that this dot corresponds to this row of this table and this row of this table. So you're going to put them together and that's the result. Okay, similarly for 2, we are talking about this row, which is x2, 2, and we are talking about this row, which is y2, 2. So we get x2, y2 in the output. Okay, now for there is no other dot, right? Because we put the dots only where the keys matched. One matched with one, so there's a dot. Two matched with two, so there's a dot. That's it. No other matches. So only those two rows are going to be there in the output. So the result of joining these two is going to be this. Okay, so that's how joining works, right? So effectively, another way to think of it is like this. We are saying, okay, the key here is one, and the key here is one. So what I'm going to do is to bring the corresponding value and drop it on here, add it on here. So that's what happened. So you had one x1 and then we brought in the value y1 based on the matched key. That's another way to look at it. Same thing for this. Okay. So this one, uh, again, as I said earlier, the solid circles indicate the matches. The Only these will be in the result of the join, nothing else, right? So only when uh, the keys match, only those are going to be in the result. Okay. Now that kind of a join where uh, only the keys that match only the rows corresponding to matching keys are in the output. That is called as an inner join. Okay. So the way you will write the code for that is X. And then we use the pipe and say inner join Y. And then by equals key. In fact, you don't need to specify this because uh, if you don't specify anything, it will go by matching columns. And that's what would have happened. But I'm just clarifying here. Right. So when you say by equals, you're going to give the name of the column on which you're performing the join. And assuming that this, uh, the columns in both the tables have the same name, which in our present case they do. Later on, we'll see what syntax to use when the column names actually don't match. 
Okay. Of course, another way to do this is also to say, instead of using pipes, if you wanted to do it directly, you would have said inner join within parentheses x comma y by equals key. Okay. So you could have said that also. Uh, but since we are using the pipe, we are able to leave out the first argument because of this. Right. And again, our preference always is to use pipes because uh, most of the time we'll be performing many operations and pipes make it really easy. Okay, so this is what is going on from the previous slide. We saw this uh, this diagram and how it works. Okay, so now let's consider uh, outer joins. So inner joins are characterized by situations where only rows for which the keys match will be in the output. Okay, now sometimes when we are joining tables, we may say, well, I want all the matching rows to be in the output, but for one of the tables, I want even the non-matching rows to be in the output. Okay, and we'll see concrete examples of this later, but right now let's take a look at this scenario. Right? So here, we are, it's the same thing, right? We've got, uh, you know, one, two, three, one, two, four. So these really are the same two tables. Now we are looking at the matches. So we find that there is a match for one. As before, there's a match for two as well. For three, there is no match, but what we are saying is, if you do a left join, right? So here we've got two tables. One is on the left. This table is on the left-hand side. This table is on the right-hand side, right? Simply in terms of its position, right? There are two tables, X and Y. We put this on the left, we put this on the right, right? So what we are saying is, whenever there is a key match, I want the result in the output, but if there is no key match, then, I want all the corresponding rows from the left table to be included anyway, right? So the way left join works is for the table on the left hand side, match or no match, all the rows are going to appear. For the table on the right hand side, only the matched rows are going to appear, right? But of course, for the table on the left hand side, since there is no match on the right hand side, the corresponding column cannot have any value, right? So the result is going to look like this. one x1, y1, just like before, 2, x2, y2, again like before, 3 has no match in the other table, so he's going to have 3, x3, but the second column, val y, is going to be empty, so na, it's a missing value, right? So when you say left join, what you're saying is, look, the left-hand table takes priority, so its rows are going to appear no matter what, if there is a match or no match, okay? And for the match, uh, so in the output, all the matches will appear. Where there is no match, all the rows on the left-hand side will still appear with the corresponding columns from the Y being empty, okay? So this is how the result is going to look if you did a left join. Of course, you can guess how it's going to look if you did a right join, okay? And, and you'll do a left join by just doing left join, right? So again, earlier when we did the inner join, we used the function inner join, right? Uh, left join is one form of what is called as outer join. And you use the syntax, you, you call the function left join, right? So we are saying x left join y by equals key. And that's the result you're going to get. Okay, again, as we are doing all of these, uh, I've given you the code. So uh, definitely take a look at the code, execute the code, see what the result looks like and only then proceed with the video, right? So otherwise, uh, it will look like everything is clear, but then when you go and do it, things will be very confusing, right? So I would say, take it slow, execute the code, look at it, think about it, uh, maybe try your own examples, then proceed with the video. Okay, so right join is going to be the opposite of left join. In other words, for the, the table on the right hand side now takes priority. Okay, in this case, the table on the right hand side is the Y table. So in any case, match or no match, all its columns are going to appear. So that's why one, two, four, all of its columns have appeared. And where there is no match on the, with the X table, you're going to get an NA, right? So the row one and row two have matches. So they are like before, but the four, the row with the key four has no match. So the X, val X is going to be NA for that, right? Remember val X and val Y are simply the column names in these two tables, right? The first, uh, this is called key, this is called val x, 
This is called key. This is called val y. As you probably guessed, the function to use for the right join is the function called right join. And you do this. Okay. Now, sometimes you may have situations where you want all the matches and all the mismatches also to be shown. In other words, wherever there is a match, show everything. If there is no match for a particular row on the left hand side, show its data. If there is no match for a particular row on the right hand side, show its data as well. Okay, that's called as a full join. Right? So here are the two matches. They are shown. And row 3 doesn't match. So its complete data is going to appear with an A. And row 4 on the right hand side doesn't match. So its data is also going to appear with an A. Okay? Now, uh, later on we'll see actual applications. Essentially what we are saying with the left join is, Show me all the rows from the left for which there are matches, but also show me on, on the rows on the left for which there are no matches. That's a left join. Right join is the exact converse. Full join is show me wherever there are matches. If there are no matches on either side, show me them as well. Okay, so that's, that's the way that uh, this is used. And uh, the function for full join is full join. 